Hi all, good morning, good evening. So we will continue our yesterday's discussion. In last class we saw the all the kind of select queries and how to use nested select queries and select options and messages. Right? So I missed out on two parts which I want to discuss take it up here. One was join, join queries, like you using inner join and outer join on tables in the self queries and then another one is size of RC check after self query which is a mandatory check we should be doing that's a good programming practice okay so whenever first of all I will go for size of RC check so whenever you are doing just like in the read uh, statement we saw earlier on internal table so we are performing read and a uh, system variable size of RC s y hyphen s u b r c so s y is the structure name okay which is a global structure which is available during the execution of a program and the variables are automatically set based on the ABAP statements that we are using in our program in our code so after select query or any table operation usually size of RC value gets set or reset or it gets some value depending on the successful uh, if it was a successful execution or the data was fetched or not so if there is no data fetched in this table or there is no data found so it will show you size of rc as not initial if size of rc is initial that means the query was a success whenever you are doing a cell query so always always make sure after you are uh, doing a select uh, uh, statement you are putting a select statement you should check size of rc if size of rc is initial then only proceed otherwise else else what I will do I will give a message and if okay now you see now you do pretty printer it will arrange the code in a more presentable way where it will be very clear that I am fetching a record here from S flight table and then I am checking if it was successful or not if records were fetched or not that means if size of RC is initial or not this system variable should be zero that means it was successful execution of previous statement okay if it is successful then process and write the output if it was not successful then show a message okay so I will make it error message let's say and we saw how this message and all are coming so I am not going to again repeat that so let's go and see how it works size of RC check so let's say I am giving nothing here currently I will execute so size of RC field message class that's message class that message is coming from there so we can do one thing that double click on this it will take you to that message class and then you can just edit that particular entry so instead of that let's say no record found I will say so now you see the reusability of this message class I will tell you I will show you so no record found this is a message I am giving if I am face facing uh, like I am not able to find after cell query any record so this can happen to any table in any module across module anywhere in any program so anyone can come and refer to this message class and give this message number in their program to showing this message they don't have to create again a new message class a new number so they can reuse it so that's the benefit of message class and translation is another benefit but translation is there is the text symbol as well that we saw in the text elements but that we can use locally in the program we cannot access it from outside other program okay so that is the reason text symbol in the program we use for text maintaining text in the program specific uh, uh, values all the hard coded values so even this hyphen that I'm using here this should also go in the text symbol okay though there is no meaning to that there is no translation or anything so better you declare either in the text symbol or you declare it here as a constant okay so I think we discussed about constants so I will give constants you can declare uh, constant data types which will whose values will never change okay even in debugging mode we cannot change the value for constant so generally naming convention LC local constant and I will give hyphen or like uh, whatever you call it uh, separator okay type it is a type character and value is this so this is a hyphen I am using as value so I will use now instead of using this hyphen hard coded value so your code should not have hard coded values anywhere okay that's the best programming practice okay so we will see the tools that we use to validate our code and syntax and everything and standard coding practices so here you will see program check will be there you see then syntax check main program check then uh, uh, abap text co cockpit so generally we don't do the we do syntax check we do this code inspector extended program check and uh, there is something called syn check I think it will be covered in this one only yeah, extended program check so when you click on that 
okay and then you select everything activate all checks all type of check it will check okay and run checks okay and then it will show you how you want to display the message it will option is here so you see there is no error no warning uh, sorry only one warning sorry total one two three three warning so you go there and it will show you what i have done wrong do not use field symbol globally do not use field symbol globally so i have declared somewhere some fields which is i am using globally you just double click on that it will take so i am de i am declaring these variables globally that means it is ac accessible in this program anywhere okay any subroutine can access it. so they ask you to avoid this sort of thing because using the data statement allocates memory and memory comes at the cost of performance okay so when you are declaring something globally it will have it will occupy that much of memory how much memory you can double click on the structure you see these many fields calculate the length of these fields all the data element how many character string and that much byte of memory it will occupy okay as soon as you declare this data statement doesn't matter it is holding the data or not okay so that's a, a memory uh, like a performance issue okay so you should not be doing this so generally we declare all the value variables locally locally means where we need it we will we saw the concept of subroutines right so within the subroutine we declare variables but we cannot avoid this thing global you need global videos to carry global values okay sometimes you need uh, a variable which is needed in multiple subroutine okay you need uh, the data to process in multiple subroutines okay so let's say i have a subroutine which multiplies and another subroutine which adds the data and i have a table on which these operations needs to be performed so i have to declare that table globally i have no option i cannot declare that uh, table within the perform and then again you select query there to fetch data into it and then again i will in the other subroutine i will have to do the same thing to fetch the data into it right so i have to declare the table globally and at once i have to use select statement to fetch data into it and then i have to call the subroutine and inside that i can use these tables for processing of data okay in the both the subroutine because that's a global variable it will be ex accessible in all the subroutines within that program so that's the benefit of using global subroutine local so local sorry global uh, variables or data declarations and local will be used only in within the subroutine we declare them okay so that's the difference between local local and global variables it's all about visibility locally declared sub uh, variables within the subroutine are accessible only in that subroutine and they their like their memory gets freed and they gets like uh it's re get refreshed when it comes out okay we will see that in the subroutine chapter when we will after this we will talk about modularization technique we will see that visibility of the variables okay i think we have not discussed yet modularization technique so that will be covered in that so that's the size of our c check for you guys okay so make sure you always check this or there is another way to check this instead of checking size of our c take this table in which you are fetching the value give it here and put this body just to make sure you if you if it is a table without header line then this is enough this much is enough this is representing the body of the table because there is no default work area associated with uh, it with with the same name header line there is no header line but if it is a table with header line so better you give this symbol here okay then it will check if this table is initial or not so in that case it the condition will become reverse completely because this table should not be initial this table should not be blank in order to process the entries in it right it should have value so you will put is not initial okay is not initial then only you are going to process that and if it is blank that means if it is initial that is else part then i will give message that no record found there was no, nothing matching that criteria in the select query nothing got found from the database table okay so let's activate this this will also behave the same okay i will give a a here and it will fetch value it will fetch values and if i give some random value x z or something it will not will not fetch anything it will show you error message no record found go back so that is the that is how we use size of rc check or not initial check in any table okay now after this we come to something called join or join statement okay so just like we saw something called views in the data dictionary i'll go to sc11 there was something called views right we created few views if you remember z uh, star 4 i think we created something called z mm -hmm. 
I don't remember then. So we'll see guys, this is what happens when you don't follow a naming convention. I should have followed for all the objects a strict naming convention of ZEMP something like that. So that it will become very easy to find out. Otherwise what I can do if I go to SCAT, that is the bible for all the uh, like a web developers that is the one stop solution for all kind of object development okay so you don't have to go any other transaction for developing anything you can develop everything from here so i will what i will do i will choose the package and i will give that package that, that we are be us using g best pkg i think pkg uh, sorry it will search automatically g best uh, star okay it will automatically come wait for some time it will come so i will save that and then i will see if what dictionary objects i have created so you see view these are the views that i have created database view help view then uh, maintenance view and uh, uh, last one was one more what all views were there i think it was presentation view no, types of I forgot types of views in SAP ABAP. Okay. I think it was presentation in different types of views in SAP ABAP. Projection view. Yeah. This is projection view. Okay. So we have views. We created what was the like uh, condition for that when we were creating the data with view. So we were providing two tables okay which were having one relationship between them a common field between them right foreign key relationship we defined so and then it was returning entries which was based on this condition the joining condition that we are defining similarly that we can do in the code level also okay so what we are going to do we are going to use two tables spfli and s flight two tables are there okay and based on that we will define join condition okay so let's uh, let's first define some uh, type i think already i have defined lty flight con id car id fl data i have and now i will pick some fields from uh, spfli table let's say air air form and uh, airport to those information i will fetch from air port from i think this is the field name and type s underscore from air P. Okay, and then I have air P2 type S underscore uh, 2 air P. Okay, so let's let me do one thing. We'll go to this, I will declare that table also here so that we might use work area then headers and this select options from there. So now if I double click on this table, let's see, you will have the fields called ARP from ARP2. Okay, and care ID con ID. This information should be there. Double click, it's taking too much time. Mm, let's have you jump to other object here. SPFLI. Let's see if it's opening. Okay, you see? We have con ID, care ID, then city, airport from, and airport to. All these four fields are here available, right? And in SPFLI, sorry, S flight table, what all we have? We have care ID, con, con ID, and FL date. So I want the information that uh, carrier ID, that means which airline is going, what is the connection ID for that airline, these two information. Based on that, I want the flight date and i want the information from which city to which city it is going from which airport to which airport it is going those information i want based on care id and con id and flight date okay so but that information is in the spfli table airport to and airport from so so we have to provide a join on these two tables okay so how do we do it in the code using select statement 
so that's what we do so we are going to fetch this so i have now enhanced this structure with two more fields and now lty this ls flight and lt flight will automatically get these two fields in it okay this all five fields will come so let's select data from uh, both the table using inner join so join first let's see what is join is like inner join and outer join so you can just google inner join and outer join in SAP ABAP. Okay, so auto join okay, and auto join is used to result uh, to return results by combining rows from the two or more tables. But unlike an inner join, auto join will return every row from one specified table even if join condition fails. Okay, so what it will do from the left side table, it will pick all the entries and it will display respect and from right side table, it will pick all the common entries. So main difference it will explain with some example see some example so we mostly we use only inner joins in the table and by default database views what we create in the se11 they use inner join always based on join condition they fetch only the common entries from both the table okay so you see here somebody has explained it very beautifully it seems table a has these two columns field one and field two it has these values table b has field one column common with the table a okay so there has to be common column join condition on which you will define okay now they're uh what you call what they are doing trying to do i take field one two three they have declared an internal table with fields one two three that is structure that we declare with five fields right so it has both the column columns from both the tables field one field two and field one field three it has so field one field two field three all three are part of this internal table now after that what is the inner join result what will be the inner join result so wherever this, uh, this uh, thing is common okay you see x is here field 1 here is x and here is x and they are divide, defining the condition join condition on field 1 because that is the common field between 2 so x is common here and x is here so all two entries here they are fetching you see x 100 will come here 100 came and here 100 again came because there was one more entry abc and def so both entries got fetched from so common values wherever this entry was matching field one was matching it fetched all the values and z also was matching so but there was no entry for y you see x in the table one there was entry called y but in table two table b there was no column called uh, no field with value y so it didn't fetch anything for y only the common entries got fetched now outer join what it will do see on the left hand side or right it will fetch all the entries even the no object for key y in the table b so field 3 is blank okay so it will fetch a blank entry on the right from the right side table okay it is fetching blank entry but from the left side table it is fetching all the entries okay irrespective of if it was there or not on the right hand side table okay so that that is how auto join works so this is called left auto join because it is fetching all the entries of the left side table Okay, why I'm using the term left and right, we will see in the code here when we will write in the select query. So, let's select star from SPFLI inner join. You see, I'm fetching, so SPFLI here is the left hand side table, inner join on which table? So, the statement you write here, left and inner join ke left me, in the left of inner join, SPFLI table is there and S flight is there on the right hand side. So, inner join on SPFLI and there is a special operator we use tilde operator okay tilde operator which will be just beside your numeric one on your keyboard just left of it there will be another key which will have a uh, comma kind of symbol and then on top it will have a tilde so use shift button to put it so it is called tilde operator so in join we have to use like this SPFLI equal to S flight what is the join condition so char id and con id should match for both the tables so let's give char id and same for con id also have to copy paste okay con id into so 
we are fetching all fields from SPFLI okay into the join as slate and then into corresponding fields of fields of table LT flight GHT okay let's say we'll make it FLI GHT this one also this was a mistake okay so now our select query on join let's say any syntax error is there no it is syntactically correct so now better check size of RC if size of RC is initial and if oh my god if size of RC is not initial then throw error that no record found else so always use uh, good programming practice because if someone will there will be a lot of level of code reviews will happen with your client and with your internal peer group and with senior developers and if your code is not up to the standard they might reject it you have to redo everything okay so make sure that your code is following the conventions what I will do I will take any this one loop at remove this start in the beginning just uncomment these lines okay ltls flight i think i have to correct the spelling now f l i g h t should be h and h and h and here i can use this lc separator instead of this hard coded values I will use constant. What is the benefit of this? That tomorrow if you want to change, you have to change at only one place. You just change that constant value at one place in the top declaration and everywhere this value will change. Let's say tomorrow I want a separator called comma. So what I will do, instead of going everywhere, I will just change the here constant value. Instead of hyphen, I will give comma here and it will have an impact everywhere in the code where it has been used. So that will be help with your reus reusability concept. Okay and what else care id con id separate fl date then ct2 and ct from also i want to print right so ls airport 2 and airport from so what i will do i will i will copy entire thing i just need to change the field names now one is airport airport from and airport 2 Sorry. take this and give it here ok so now our code is ready we will see so one more thing we have not specified any where condition here right we have just specified the join condition here this is the join condition this is the same as we had in the and data with view there were two things one was join condition here that we are defining and from fetching when we will be fetching from the data with view in our uh, code we will put a where condition also okay so here you see selection condition is there they have given so you can give in that table the field name and operator equal to okay it, it should be aa flight id care id should be aa you just give that so it will fetch always this view will always return only for uh, flight, uh, flight ID AA ok it will read so similarly you, have to, you can define a where condition here and that may come from selection screen that we have defined this parameter right care ID and date and all but I am not going to give anything currently we will fetch all the data ok let's execute and you will see for this flight ID and this connection ID there is a flight on 1st May, first May 2013 from JFK to San Francisco okay so this is the detail you are getting from two different tables okay and if it is like a regular demand from the user to get such kind of thing so you can design a permanent uh, view database view in here and it will have those uh, same join conditions and uh, no selection condition because user will be giving their own um, selection condition 
from selection screen so you can define that join condition you can create a view and instead of using these two tables here SPFLI and simple write a select query just like we write for any other table you just write a select query on the view itself directly that will also behave like just like a database table the database view and you can fetch all the entries so this is how you use inner join so for more information on join what you can do just select that and press F1 and it will take you to a web documentation okay that will give you exact and most updated information uh, as for your uh, system version okay so that is the best way to learn it will have example also it will show you outer join left outer join everything all examples will be there so but anyways we saw on the internet that uh, what is outer join so you can try it out on your own I'm not going to cover that because mostly we use inner join and always remember this very important from interview perspective they will definitely ask how you perform what is inner join what is outer join okay so now let's let's uh, get into something called uh, modularization techniques our next topic okay so modularization technique is something that uh, which will segregate your code into small parts reusable parts and that's modularization technique okay so right now i'm just writing the code in w one line by line line by line i writing and that code has reached thousand lines four thousand lines and anybody will start seeing it they will get mad actually they will not understand what i am trying to write here okay because they will see all the codes and loops and select and they they have to write an algorithm for themselves while going through my code they write okay first this guy is fetching data from uh, somewhere or some table then he's processing it then he's doing this then he's doing that okay so that's that's a tough way to identify the code so what's the better way so you just segregate your program into modules small small modules okay the, the one example is subroutines first we will discuss something called subroutines then we have something called subroutines okay then we have something called function modules these are modularization technique and different way of uh, reusing the codes okay function module also called fms for sort okay fm or fms okay and then uh, we have something called methods object oriented web concept this we will not cover now we will cover this in our uh, object oriented classes okay that will come later then after that we have something called uh, includes okay and then we saw that in during the when we were creating program there was a program type called uh, we were we are creating executable program there was a program type called include type so that we will create now in the modularization technique and we'll see what is the use of it how we reuse it the main concept main idea behind modularization of code is uh reuse reusability okay main agenda is reusability and second is clarity in your code the way you write okay the way you present your code okay it should be readable it should be understandable even by someone who is non-technical he will just see that okay you are calling this uh, subroutine first then this subroutine is nothing but a piece of code it's which represents a process okay so and then we can reuse it we'll show you after this includes and then we have something called macros so macros we don't use generally but yeah macros is used in workflow at few places okay so we don't use, we use heavily subroutines function modules methods and include these four are mostly used modularization techniques okay and this will be definitely a part of interview question they will ask about this and the passing the parameters into these things are again very important very important to understand okay so now you see here uh, auto join uh, inner join all the documentation has popped up here with examples so you can just go through these things i will not go because it's taking too much time to open so you can explore from there okay so let's discuss about subroutines okay so subroutines uh recall in subroutine uh we will have um, what you call a piece of logic which we can reuse okay just like you want to add two numbers okay let's say i have few variables coming in from some table okay i will just comment this thing we don't need these things now and let's say here we have parameters also i will comment and select options also i will comment okay this also not needed for now I show you the use of subroutine I will give two parameters let's say 
a type i and another parameter b type i okay two user input i am getting a and b and then i have declared a variable data c type i now you want to add these two numbers and you want to multiply these two numbers right so you want to do both the operations okay and there can be multiple numbers coming in and there might be some other process where it is getting overridden and you want to add it again okay so first it will come from user input and then you want to write the output so let's say you are doing the calculation c equal to okay sorry z c equal to a plus b and you want to write in the output c right c I'm doing something wrong. Okay, yeah. okay, right. See, so what will happen? Activate, execute. Here you give five. Here you give ten. It should print fifteen, right? It is printing fifteen. Now, what happens in the program during execution? After this, there is some change in the program. Change in the value of a. A has been changed somewhere in the program and it has been assigned a new value internally called fif 15. So A has 15 and B has some value. Now you want to write the value of C again. So you have to copy paste this logic again, right? You have to do the sum again and you have to write it again. So let's see what it prints. I will give 10, I will give 5 and it should print 15 and then it is printing 20 because internally it is taking 15 as a for here and b is still is a 5 so you see twice i have used this and twice i have written so if i will say 10 number of times or n number of times i want to use this so every time you are going to write this this is a very very simple example this is an not even a 0 0.11 0 0.01 percent of what we are going to use in the real time business scenario for subroutines this is a very simple example so what we will do, we will create something called subroutines. Subroutine we write like perform. You are instructing the program to perform an operation of name, add numbers. You can give any name, Spiderman, Superman, whatever you want. Using, using what? Using your variables A, using A and B. Okay. So and then this does not exist still in logic inside it is not existing using a and b you will give a variable name so you this will keep changing whatever you variable you want to pass these are this is passing the values what we are passing here okay so these are the parameters we are passing so now you have to create it to create the subroutine just double click on it and say yes i want to create it it does not exist create it so it will suggest there are two ways to create subroutine one you can create in the main program itself where you are creating just below it bottom you just keep creating those subroutines write the logic or you can create a separate include program and there you define all these subroutines all the logics and you just call here using perform statement you just call those subroutines and then in order to identify that uh, include here you just declare include statement here so it will show you both the option when you click yes it will show a pop-up where you will have this program name and it will have a new automatically generated which is SAP suggested uh, include name it will show you so for time being we will just select the current program and later when we will see the include program concept for modularization in that we will see the how to create via include also and how to use it here okay so it's uh, taking a lot of time so now all this logic whatever I have written here repeated logic will go inside this and this code will become more readable and more understandable by anyone who will go through this code okay they don't have to understand okay here c equal to a plus b and he's out writing in the output then he's again uh, populating this with some other variable then again he's doing a plus b all the logic it, it, will, it will make your code uh, very like uh, clumsy and uh, not uh, most most of the developer don't don't like it okay like senior developer they will see they will uh, blast at you okay that what kind of code you have written and then you want to again use this logic how will you use it you can't you reuse the logic if you are just keep on writing the code you have to modularize it okay so let's load it so 
the way we pass the value in these parameters just now I pass perform add number A and B like that I have passed right so this is called uh, like there are few ways by which you can pass the va variables here one is called uh, by reference one is called uh, by value and one is called by value and result there are three ways of passing parameters in the subroutines one is pass by value one is pass by reference and third is pass by value and result what is the difference between these three when you say reference as I passed here A and B perform add number I write that statement here perform I created a subroutine called I will create let it load I'm not sure why server is so slow ok add number A and B that means here I am passing these two variable sorry using you have to pass the keyword using ok using A and B so what does it mean that we are passing it by reference reference means if inside actually we are passing a memory reference a variable which is pointing to the memory of these variables A and B a copy of that and if the value inside it is changed inside the subroutine A is changed to something else so the value of a variable A outside the subroutine will also change that's passing by reference and when you pass by value which we do like using you have to write a value keyword here and in the bracket you have to write the variable name again for V also you have to write like this you can write like this ok so value A value B pass by value that means a copy of A and a copy of B variables both the variables are getting passed in the subroutine and inside if you are doing any operation to change the value of A and B variable it will not impact what is outside what you have passed it if you have passed 5 and 10 here it will remain 5 and 10 doesn't matter inside the subroutine if you have changed it to 10 and 15 so that copy will get impacted original memory original variable will not get impacted so that's passed by value and then third comes something called a pass by value and result in that we use a separate keyword called changing ok changing so instead of using we pass something called changing changing keyword and then we pass this like value A value B so in that case what will happen that A and B if inside let's say I will take A only one to make it simpler every time I have to say A and B only A let's say I am passing only one parameter A ok so inside the subroutine when you are changing the value of A it will not impact the original value of A variable unless the subroutine is completely executed that means in between during the execution of subroutine if there is an exception there is an error let's say divide by 0 is the, everybody knows that's an exception in uh, that's a error actually it will terminate the program if you try to divide any number by 0 right so the result will be you don't know what kind of error will come ok so that's that's an error so, uh, so what we do there in such cases it will not commit those changes back to A but if there is successful execution of that subroutine complete logic inside it got successfully executed and it come out of the subroutine successfully that uh, execution of the program then it will change the value of A so it's value pass by value and result that's pass by value and result if you are getting a proper result then change the value of original variable otherwise if there was any exception or any error during that execution do not change the original variable unless the entire subroutine was successfully executed so that's the difference between pass by value pass by reference and pass by value and result so pass by value we just pass a copy of value copy of the value of the variable and it does not impact your original one inside any changes pass by reference if you change anything inside it it will impact this one uh, original variable and then there we don't use value keyword in pass by I will show you Th there are two ways to write pass by reference ok one is this one using a using a you can use only one variable that is fine using a and another win is changing a so remember one thing in it is very con tricky question that interviewer may ask you that what is the difference between using and changing 
in in a subroutine while calling a subroutine what is the difference between using and changing keyword okay it doesn't technically there is no difference okay even if you are passing a variable as using parameter still you can change its value inside it and this is passed by reference always normal using and changing exactly behave in the same way it's just the way you read it okay it's just the understanding of the code if someone is reading this subroutine who doesn't know about code he will understand that we are just going to use a variable inside the subroutine but if you will see if he or she will see this code he will understand that inside the subroutine we are going to change the variable a in both the cases we are passing it as a reference first thing second thing in both the cases inside the subroutine we can change the value of this variable and it will impact the variable because it is by reference so exactly same behavior it will unless we are passing it by value if we are passing it by reference using and changes changing behave same if we pass by uh, pass by reference both behave same if we pass by value that means if you put a value keyword here and then you pass the variable then using and changing behave separately using only uh, like using will uh, not impact the value of a and b but changing will impact the value of a and b variables once it will successfully execute the subroutine then it will change the value here okay so it is if you are using changing with value keyword it is value pass by value and result method okay if you are using changing without value it is just passed by reference this pass by reference i will write it here what is all pass by reference and what is all pass by value it will be very easy to understand pass by reference okay this is pass by reference this is also exactly pass by reference no difference unless you add a value keyword then only difference and this is purely pass by value okay that global variables whatever variable we are passing here the, those values will not change and then there is pass by value and result where if successful execution of sub subroutine happens it will get changed the variable outside also will get changed so this table kind of thing you need to remember this is very important from interview perspective in modularization they will definitely ask pass by value pass by reference and same concept implies with function modules also there also we have option to pass parameters and that also we can pass by value pass by reference using changing all those things we will see will be available there also okay so let's see if it is oh, come on it got stuck i think stop the transaction so i believe the theoretical part uh, we have covered for subroutine okay apart from that uh yep so apart from that uh, we have uh, something called tables also we can pass as parameters okay so that is like uh, there is a separate syntax uh, instead of using keyword here okay we use tables keyword okay and there is order to pass the parameters in the perform statement while calling a subroutine we use tables first then using then changing that is the order we have to follow okay that is otherwise it will give you syntax error okay that is the mandatory order to be followed but now tables keyword is obsolete let's say i want to pass that uh, internal table it flight for some reusability operation at ltl flight we declare right so i will do it like this ltl lt flight using a whatever so this table statement is obsolete even the function module has that tables column but that is obsolete but still it, it is showing an applicable because available because old code has been written with that statement so to support that it is still available but never use table statement always use using or changing okay only use using and changing you can pass the table with the using and changing keyword also okay so you can directly write here instead of a variable you can pass lt flight that's it okay and here we will see something called table type that we discussed its use we will see while passing tables in the subroutine so when we define a subroutine even you will create the definition of the subroutine this we this is the calling the subroutine and you have to define this subroutine in your program so you have to give the same name obviously and form and form statement we use to define any subroutine and form okay give form that subroutine name and then whatever the parameter is they are using okay whatever it it will automatically change its name here sometimes okay it will suggest you some p underscore a if you have passed a right so like that's so a p underscore lt underscore flight like that it will show you it will add automatically or if you passing it changing it will show you c underscore a 
okay automatically it will suggest it will while creating the subroutine automatically it will come using p underscore a let's say for this one you see changing so it will come as like this you can have changing and using in the same statement as well so it doesn't matter all will behave as same pass by reference so you changing it will show you c underscore a okay so here better you define type okay always always use type here okay so whatever the variable type a was having it was having type i right we have declared this parameter a on the selection screen right in the code you see parameter ty a type i so always in the form when we are defining this subroutine definition there you write form then you write the subroutine name then you write changing or using whatever it is and then you write type i then if you have another variable let's say b also you are passing so c underscore a uh, sorry it will come as c underscore b type i okay it was also type i so that you give then you have using parameter also so you can give using let's say using let's say lt flight i was using in the call so i have to give you the lt flight and what is its type okay that you need to define so type so what type you will give here now that you have to define table type for it that we discussed in our data dictionary lesson okay so you have to define a table type for that lt flight okay here we have defined a local type right so this you have to declare in se 11 as a structure then you have to define a table type out of that structure that line type structure is nothing but line type using that you have to define a table type and then table type you can use it directly in the subroutine definition here okay that you have to define or internally a global uh, table type you have to define in your program itself okay so that's how we define a and that's how we use tables in the parameter now let's remove this for time being and then you just dot why we define here this type statement generally SAP will create automatically it will not show you this type but you have to always give typed variable so it it removes any type of inconsistency due to type mismatch while you are passing any variable in this uh, while calling the subroutine so it will check the type and it will avoid any such sort of like mismatch of variables and also it's just like uh, prevention it's not mandatory thing to define type here first thing okay it's just prevention it's just good coding practices okay that you need to follow so better define type okay and then you can just uh, just google why we define type here okay it will give you better reasons i believe it will be explained properly what now we have a is changed to ca here and b is changed to c here and i want to and what i wanted a and b i wanted here a changing a b and c all three i want to change okay or i want to use a and b and change c right that's what we wanted right using we are using the a and b from user input and then we are changing c so you have to write here changing and using using it will come like this and changing c underscore c will come type i so this is how we declare actually in the parameters just to identify which is using parameter which is changing parameter just to distinguish it okay and if it is a table then we give ct underscore or pt underscore in the using okay now you can write c underscore c equal to c underscore c equal to c underscore a sorry it should be p underscore a in as per naming convention p underscore a I will c underscore a plus p underscore b because we have passed it as using so it should come as p it's just a parameter not changing parameter p underscore b so it's not case sensitive so ignore the if capital and small you can ignore this just character matters so c underscore c equal to p underscore a plus p underscore now this is subroutine is ready for using now i can call this subroutine n number of times with n number of two variables and one changing parameter always and this signature this is called signature of the subroutine whatever you are using here changing here whatever you are passing keywords here this signature should match with its definition you see definition also should have the same signature same number of elements if that doesn't match it will give you error that signature is not matching for the parameter it will give you something like this so you can see here in the signature of this subroutine definition we have two using parameters and one changing parameter right so here form and form okay and here also in the while calling we are passing two using parameter and one changing parameter okay that's how you 
create subroutine so this just you need to copy paste in the code now when you it allows you to create i'm not sure what has gone wrong it has stuck maybe that server maintenance issue is due to weekend so theoretically i have explained this uh, what we call subroutines we will go into practical in the next session okay and we will discuss about uh, a model other modularization technique called function module okay now one more thing i wanted to show you that visibility we talked about about the variables if i declare any variable we can declare any variable here let's say some temporary variable for calculation purpose lv underscore local something like that okay type c and then lv local i will assign some value let's say lv local equal to uh, x i will say so as soon as this subroutine call will finish so let's say I have called this subroutine three times in my program, A, B, and then C, and then I have two more variable to be added. So let's say D, E, and then changing B, ch changing F, and then one more time. So what happens? The statement execution will reach first this statement. Ignore the first one. Only these two. Let's say we have. Okay. So first it will hit this statement and it will go to the definition. It will take A and B and it will try to operate here and it will give A plus B, 5 plus 10, okay 15, let's fill 15 here and then C plus C value will get updated in this C, okay C parameter. Then you can use this C outside anywhere in the program. Then it will hit this statement. It will take D and E as parameter, let's say it has 20 and 25, so it will say 20 plus 25, okay 45, let's pass. 45 in C underscore C which will get copied to the third parameter here which is your F okay so don't go by name what is given here and what is given in the definition okay it will definitely it may vary it, it can be anything here here you can write anything you can write Spider-Man, Superman, Type I, Spider-Man or Batman whatever you want you can write here but it will map value based on the positioning okay so that's all now LV local x is having LV local is having x value. This will be only as soon as it will come out of the subroutine. This value will go away. It is finished. But if we have whatever variable we have declared globally in the program, LT flight and all whatever we have declared, that can be used here and that will hold value in the subroutine also outside the subroutine also. It will not change. If you want that during the next subroutine call, this flag is should hold the value. You have to use something called static keyword. Just Google. You have to declare it as a static. If you declare it as static. If you assign once the value to this subroutine during the first subroutine call, it will hold that value in the next subroutine call also and another subroutine call also. Normal data variables, they won't hold subroutine value during the next subroutine call. If you are calling same subroutine, once the execution is finished, this is gone, finished. Okay? So this is how it works. Okay? We will see it in the system next time when we are created. So today, I think we are good for now and we have kick started our modularization technique which is one of the most important topic. So we will spend more time on at least one to two sessions on this one, okay? And I think we are good to go for today, okay? Keep practicing, keep learning, and keep sharing, and keep subscribing. And uh, thanks for all your support and feedbacks. And yeah, please share with whoever needs the uh, training on SAP Web App, and uh, do leave your comments in the video so that I can improve. Thank you so much, and have a great day.